cannot be bought, it cannot be sold, and it cannot be forced upon someone. What am I thinking about? What am I referring to? It's the ability to do cardio on a consistent basis. You guys are wild. But either way, reasonably busy day. Because we're going to the Detroit Pro Show Slash Expo this weekend. So that'll be pretty fun. That should be cool. But you know what I haven't done for a while is take caffeine in the morning. Uh, for the last few months, I've just been doing you know, my cardio normally. Like wake up, 30 minute bike, whatever, and then scram. I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I was like, okay, no more caffeine. Because, and this is kind of, uh, I mean, this is probably like half even fucking true. But, not half, I don't know, whatever. So having caffeine in your system, just kind of being stimulated like that, I'm like 93% sure it's going to give you an increased rate of lipolysis, aka fat burning. So to combine stimulant with cardio, just kind of doubles you up. But really all I'm trying to say is I want to actually fucking be alert and awake in the morning. So that kind of gets me thinking, what's your kind of morning routine? You know, and I don't need to know what kind of, uh, I don't need to know what razor you use on your face or what kind of toothbrush you're, uh, you're working with here. I'm talking about lifting related. You know, what do you do right when you wake up which is going to make it more likely for you to have a good lift later on in the day. You know, do you do a do you do a big stretch? You got a ten minute yoga routine. Probably not going to hurt you, but I'd say the one thing that I'm really trying to get back into, or not. I mean, yeah, I get. I haven't been doing it for a little while, but right in the morning, I kind of have a big ass drink and the caffeine capsule the hostile pure calf caffeine capsule ready to go right when I wake up. So all I have to do, alarm goes off, jump out of bed, go to the bathroom, weigh myself, then come back, slam liter and a half. Uh, no, today was just a liter, but a liter of water with some electrolytes as well as the caffeine. And then, you know, by the time I'm fucking dressed, I'm awake and I'm fucking full of fluids. So, oh, I mean, I, I say this all the time, but just being legit hydrated, how many people do you know who get like chronic headaches? I'm not, I'm not a physician, but I'd say 99 times out of a hundred, if you know somebody like that and you were to you know, figure out how much water they're drinking per day or how many, uh, like what their electrolyte intake is at. low low indeed so it's not like i'm thinking okay drink your water because it's good for you which i mean yeah we all we all know that but it is going to make you feel better when you work out you are going to have a better pump you are going to feel i mean just stronger right, compared to if you were actually fucking dehydrated and i uh i feel like i'm just repeating an exact speech i said like two weeks ago but the better that you can feel mid lift. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just going to give you a way better time, you know, because if I go to the gym and I actually feel just fatigued and sore and tired and I'm doing my sets of tricep pushdowns and it's just not really clicking. Like I don't, it'll kind of take me from feeling like I'm actually doing something I enjoy. Like I'm pushing myself in a way which makes me feel good. It'll make me go from that to feeling like, oh, this fucking sucks. Dude, my triceps are so fucking tired, man. Oh, my goodness. Still going to finish the lift, of course. Come on, it'd be crazy not to. But, I mean, even if I get a decent pump, there's no way it's going to be as good and probably not as productive as when I'm legit hydrated. 
So that's all I'm trying to say there. And this is basic shit. We all know this. We all know you should drink your fucking water and take your Flintstones gummies and get your protein in. Finish your finish your plates so you can grow up big and strong. I feel like half the shit I end up saying is just basic shit that we already know. But I think that is all I got. So let's cut to sweaty post-workout pose down and then breakfast. So I'll uh, I'll actually record some of that. Don't worry. This is not just uh, not going to be just pure car talking. But I'll, uh, let's go finish it. Perhaps a lesser known tip, cover up the timer so you don't have to actually watch how long you're doing it. If you check every minute and you're like, oh shit, I got fucking three minutes left, you're setting yourself up for failure. But 30 more seconds, then let's pose down. <coughs> you know, I feel pretty fucking out of character in the pose down spot with no pump. But... It's a way better check-in, honestly. This is one thing which will kind of... I mean, throughout the day, you're just going to look different from how much fucking food you eat. But right in the morning, after cardio, it kind of gets your blood flowing too. You might be a little veinier if you're that lean. But that's more of a consistent day-by-day -day thing that you can compare yourself to. Or you can actually see how you look. You know, because when I pose down at the end of a lift and I'm fucking fully pumped up, that's not how I really fucking look. You know, that's peak pump. Of course, it's fucking sick. I can compare it to the pump last time. But seeing yourself unpumped, you've got to remember, that's that's you. You are not you fully pumped. That's kind of uh It's been a while since I've said this, but I think that's why people are so prone to body dysmorphia. You see yourself fully pumped up and perfect lighting, and then that's your new baseline. That's your baseline level of satisfaction, where if you look any worse than that, you gotta cover up with a hoodie and not look at yourself. You, know, come on. you gotta have the fucking... I was about to say peace of mind, but no, that's not the right word. You gotta have the... an objective look at reality and understand when you're pumped up and in crazy lighting, that's, that's just an elevated look. And then you come back to normal. That is not your new normal, and then when you walk around, you feel like you look like shit. And if that's your mentality right now, you've gotta change that up, man. Because you're gonna have no fucking fun. I'd rather be excited to look extra crazy for a pump than feel normal pumped and just kind of like shit unpumped, you know? And I guess it's easier said than done. So, fuck. You got your own, you got your own issues to solve there. But let's, uh, let's get the exposure down just a touch freakier and see how we look. Oy. I should be able to do a pretty insane vacuum because right now I'm fucking holy crap <laughs> dude it's only been like fucking 10 days and I'm already substantially leaner this this diet might not push a month at least not at this fucking rate so let's uh let's just run through some classics and then we can be on my way to actually eating a real breakfast Oh my goodness. It's fucking hard to hold these vacuums, man. Oh yeah, here we go. <sighs> All right. Well, that's pretty much fucking every one of them. I, uh, one thing that's cool about fucking recording all these videos, when I put this in the computer, and I can see myself doing all this shit 
big screen style. That's fucking fun. I was saying this a few lifts ago. If you're a... I don't even want to say reasonably. If you're a decently serious lifter, and you're going to be doing this sit for a long time, it might not be the worst idea to get like a... I don't know, like kind of a... Even just a lower level, like... You know, ZV E10 or whatever. Like a, you know, like a camera. Not even, you know insanely expensive because that's one of the biggest things I've noticed from going from recording everything on the phone to you know actually using a real camera for all these clips and stuff and the pose downs something about a fancy pants lens I mean I guess that's obvious a cooler camera will have cooler shots but it is fucking cooler when I look back at all my pose downs and my progress pictures you know when I was fucking one year in two years in using like my front facing camera and zooming it in super far so I can actually be in shot. It's super fucking blurry. So that's my uh that's my one tip to you there. Maybe throw that on your uh throw that on your Christmas list. Try to maybe say it'll bring you one you know, come winter time. But let's uh let's go, let's go eat. There we go. Perfect. So, three turkey melts. Now, I'll be real. I'll be honest with you. I look at this and I do not think this is going to get me lean. This is a conventional dieting food. You know, what do, what do we typically think? What's a typical diet-friendly meal? Chicken rice? Just a, a salad with like a balsamic vinegar on it? Or, you know, just fucking egg whites. I mean, I could, I could have busted an egg white omelet. It would have been similar macros. I mean, what I'm really aiming for with dieting meals isn't necessarily the food itself. But what I want to do is eat maybe, I don't know, six-ish times a day. Maybe, maybe less, five. If I'm busy, maybe I just only eat three big meals. But each one I want to be... You know, an even chunk of my day. If for the whole day I've got like, well, actually, let me see. Yeah, I've got like 3,000 calories for the day. That's what I'm sticking with. So if I eat, you know, maybe four times a day, then I don't want each meal individually to go over 750, right? You got four meals. That's going to add up to 3,000. So if you eat four of them, each one should be about a quarter of your whole fucking, you know, daily intake. If I were to sit here and bust out a bowl of like cinnamon toast crunch and uh, maybe have like half a ribeye with like three cups of milk, that's going to add up to 50 grams of protein. I mean, it's going to be way too high on the carbs and fats, but just for argument's sake, it'll add up to probably 30 grams of fat easy and like 150 grams of carbs. So that's within my macros. I mean, if I plug that in, I'm still in a deficit so far i haven't gone over my calorie limit for the day but if you have a fucking massive meal when you're trying to diet down at any time of the day unless it's like right before you go to bed and you're just filling out your macros for you know you're still in a deficit so if you got a thousand calories left at the end of the day sure have a thousand calorie meal whatever but if you have a big meal early in the day and you're trying to diet down you're just setting yourself up to have a harder time later that night because what's going to happen I uh, actually I forgot to plug in something. Here we go, 12 grams of carbs from the electrolyte powder. But w what's going to happen is if you eat a ton of your food in the middle of the day, or even like evening, by the time nighttime comes around when you want to go to bed, let's say you're, you're dieting down. You're not eating, or you're eating 2,500 calories a day. That's your limit. So for the whole day, that's how much you get. If it's 8 o'clock at night and you go to bed at midnight, and you've hit that 2,500 calorie mark, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble making it that four hours before you go to sleep. Because, I mean, who wants to go to bed fucking hungry? That's why when I diet down, if I had to kind of give you a generalized tip, usually what I'm gonna do is kind of save my calories for later in the day. Like not a massive breakfast 
And then by the time it's like three or I don't know, four o'clock, whatever, I've still got at least like 1500 calories left. So I can have pretty decently sized meals and then go to bed not being hungry. I'd say nighttime is, if you were to somehow track the amount of times that people cheat on their diets, it's got to be, and they actually try to stick to it, it's got to be a night. Because you'll just run through your fucking calories during the day, and then uh, I'm at my limit, but I'm fucking hungry. You know, if you got the willpower not to open up the fridge and start chowing down on whatever you can get your hands on, very good. But it's going to be better if you just set yourself up in a situation where you're not so prone to fucking fail. But let's actually get into, what, what was I saying here? So, three little turkey melts. How many, what are the macros? What are the macros? Enter your guesses below. All right, did you, did you enter them? Did you guess them? So, with 250 grams of this uh, deli turkey, three slices of fat-free cheese... And then three of these keto buns, these live carb smart buns, that is all adding up to a total, plus the 12 grams of carbs from the, uh, like the electrolyte packet I'm drinking, 444 calories, 60 grams of protein, 8 grams of fat, 3 grams of carbs, and only 8 grams of fat, because, take a look here, look, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Come on, come on, little buddy. Oh, whatever, fuck it. So, on these little American cheese slices, typically each one is like 60 calories, 50 calories. Uh, so it may not be a huge drop, because these ones are 30 calories each. Three grams of carbs, four grams of protein. But that is a substantial drop in comparison to, I mean, three of these with 60 grams of car or. Er, I'm saying grams of carbs, 60 calories each. And little things like that, if you add them up over time during your day, using lower calorie options of shit, it's going to give you fucking an easier time. You're going to be able to eat more food because the food that you're eating literally has less fucking calories in it. If I were to eat one of these with just straight up, you know, regular American cheese, normal bread. Oh my goodness. If these were just normal buns, <laughs> The amount of carbs of this meal would fucking shoot up from like uh, 30 to fucking 120. So that's a pretty substantial amount of calories, man. That's almost pushing 400. And that's just in one meal alone. So in each of your meals, if you can take away you know, some of the calories, if you can kind of sneak them away and replace them with a lower calorie something or other, that's going to add up throughout the day. Honestly, if you didn't even track your macros... Now, this is not me saying don't track your macros. It's the fucking best way to go about everything diet-related, in my opinion. But if you were not to do anything diet-wise, you know, let's say you, you get your protein in, you do track your protein. I think everybody's got a good, everyone does a good job about that. If for all your other meals for the day or whatever you eat, if you always opt for just the lower calorie option of stuff, going from, you know, just eating the regular shit normally, I think you're going to fucking start to... Put yourself in a deficit, man. You're going to start losing weight because you're still eating the same foods. They just now have less calories in them. And it's not... So when you eat something, if it's really calorie dense, it's going to make you feel full. You know, if you have a really rich... Uh, what can I even... What's a good example of this? I don't know. Whatever. If you're having something really fatty, you know, very dense... It's going to make you feel full, you know, because your body does know, okay, I just had a ton of calories at once. But, you know, your stomach is also only a certain size. And usually that's what dictates your fullness level. So it's not like I'm going to eat these three sandwiches and say, oh, I'm, oh, I feel more hungry than I normally do after I eat three sandwiches. Because the amount of space that's being filled up in my fucking gullet is the fucking same, you know. So it looks the same, tastes the same. I will admit, sometimes... The calorie, the low calorie option is a little worse. Worth it though. I mean, fucking, you know, how people are talking about diet soda compared to regular. Personally, I've never tasted a difference, but that, that's your own deal. But if you can replace typical foods that you eat with a lower calorie option, it's going to make dieting so much fucking easier. I mean, I've got the fucking, 
the powdered peanut butter instead of regular sugar-free syrup. I mean, the list goes on. You know, this kind of stuff, if you are kind of serious about trimming down, I think this is one of the best ways to go about it. You know, you could, uh, I'm not going to say you won't get lean listening to like a fasting guru, but no matter what method of diet people employ or people love, you know, because for some people they hear keto and they're like, no carbs, my body's only burning fats. Oh, well, I want to burn fat. Okay, that sounds good to me. A lot of the times just kind of personal preference is going to determine what approach people take to dieting, which is all fine. It's all well and good, whatever. But across the board, no matter what you're doing diet-wise, the only people who end up losing body fat are the people who are eating in a calorie deficit. So if instead of 440 calories of, you know, this plus this little drink, I had, uh, I don't know, like a, what could even replace this? I had like a protein shake and some ice cream. If I had 400 calories worth of a protein shake, pretty solid source of protein in my opinion. It's not like I want to drink shakes exclusively, but 50 grams from a shake is fine. I've, uh, I've heard that commented before. Don't worry about it. You know, Maybe don't drink five shakes a day. I'm not necessarily sure that's the best approach. I'd rather eat steaks and chicken. Uh, but, but enough of that. So if that's all I had, 400 calories of a shake and some ice cream. I'm st and I, you know, still stay in my fucking calorie deficit. I'm still going to get fucking leaner. I'm not going to I'm probably not going to have as much fun doing it though. And that's because this meal is going to take me a few minutes to eat. And whenever I diet down, I do try to maybe take a little bit more time with the food. So it lasts longer. Because, I mean, I am fucking hungry for this. But I, if I just scarf it down, then I'm going to feel like I want to eat more. But if I were to just drink that shake and like two scoops of ice cream, that's going to disappear in three seconds. And it's not going to make me feel full at all. And once that's in my stomach, I mean, that's all liquid. That's nothing. It's not going to make me feel like I just ate something. Whereas eating solid foods, high fiber, you know, it takes a little bit longer to eat. It's literally just more food volume. This is going to make me feel full. So I'm not hungry to come back and, you know, make me make myself something for, you know, a few hours. So it's already, yeah, no, at this rate, come on, calorie deficit is easy to fucking maintain. Now that's at the cost of less sweets. You know, you know I'm a fucking maniac for sweet treats and, you know, kids cereal and whatever else but if it's not conducive with making gains you know I think that kind of explains itself there so plan now get all my stuff packed up for later hit back and then we'll see where we go from there but I will uh, I'll get into a little bit more depth with these as time progresses what, um, I, I feel like maybe I'm kind of small minded, but I mean, all these videos are usually just drive to the car, lift, come back, and then the occasional full day of eating. So you tell me, if you don't want me to do a full cooking with, a full binging with Babish, whatever, you gotta remember, I'm not making these videos just for fun. I'm making them because you guys watch them. So. You know, give me feedback, whatever you want to see. Except for like, you know, getting oiled up at a TikTok Riz party. All ears. But I'm going to sit down, enjoy this, play on my phone for a little bit. Diet is going quite well. I can't wait to see myself in a fucking month and a half. So I will catch you next time.